Now, first thing you want to do is unpack your exhaust system out of its uh, box here and lay it out on the floor. It's not unusual for the boxes to become damaged during shipping and be missing a couple of the little uh, nuts and bolts and that sort of thing. But for the most part, the fasteners seem to make the trip. I don't know why they don't put this stuff in plastic bags, but they don't. Other than basic hand tools that you'll need, uh, the only other thing you're really going to need to install this is a good sawzall. The sawzall is crucial upon the removal of the old exhaust system. And a lift is an awful nice thing to have. It allows you to get up underneath here and work safely without a fear of the vehicle dropping on you or, or any type of thing like this. I do not recommend you to try to do this type of project out in the dirt somewhere laying on your back. It's very, very difficult. The hardest part really of the whole installation is putting this big downpipe in there especially on the older type trucks, uh, 97 and earlier, it's a real bugger to get this pipe in and usually requires the use of a great big hammer. The installation is the same, pretty much regardless whether you have a, the old style uh, 97 and earlier or you have the second generation Power Stroke up to 2003 or you have the 6 liter. All of the installation procedures are pretty much the same. Now the hard part in this installation process to figure out is which one of these pipes you need to put in between the muffler and the downpipe extension. Uh, it depends on the wheelbase of the truck, whether you have a crew cab long bed or whether you have a regular cab short bed and then all the different variations in between is determined by these pipes. Now the instructions sort of help, but the fact is, is you really got to get it up in the air and get everything hung other than that middle pipe and then you sort of have to just measure and figure it out for yourself. I've, I've yet to figure out exactly how these people put these kits together, but this kit is a one-size-fits-all kit. It fits everything from, you know, uh, a, a short wheelbase extended cab to, you know, a full long wheelbase uh, 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 crew cab or a regular cab long wheelbase all the way to, you know, a long wheelbase Extended cab. I mean, it just depends on what the truck is, and they try to make one kit fit them all. And sometimes these pipes is what will give you the most trouble trying to figure out. At this point now, it's time to pick up your sawzall and go up underneath the truck and cut the old exhaust out of the truck. Now, one of the things you have to pay attention to for you drag out your sawzall and go buck wild on the thing is you got to make sure that these rubber hangers are intact. They do not come with the kit, and you will have to order some from Ford if they're not in good shape, especially up in the north. These things really, these things really get messed up from the salt and whatnot off the roads. It just takes its toll on all the rubber. But if, you're, if your hangers are in good shape, then take your time taking them apart and, uh, and slide them apart gently so that you can reuse them. The spot where the sawzall really comes handy is in this pipe that goes up over the rear end. Okay, and it really helps to take the uh, spare tire out of there in this process because it really gets in the way. Uh, and you want to make a cut in such a way that you can get this pipe up over the rear end. The best place to make this cut is right up here by the muffler in front of the rear end. You want to just cut it right in this section right here behind the muffler and then it's easy enough to slide it up over the top of the differential. One thing needs to be said about Sawzall blades, they're all not created equal. There's a blade that's uh, made by Milwaukee called the Torch that just rips through this metal like it's nothing. I recommend at least buy a five pack. You probably won't use but one on this project, but they're awful nice to have around. You know, we obviously use them periodically for things. This blade called the Torch will rip through this stuff like it's nothing. Okay, now after you get this cut, you need to remove the tailpipe from the hanger. One of the things that helps is uh, some sort of penetrating oil, it, it's, and it really doesn't do anything as far as the metal goes. WD-40, anything like that. The idea is to get the oil in here, in, in, in this joint. And the best, the easiest thing to do is to pull down on it, and it sort of stretches the joint open and spray a little uh, fluid in there on the top side of this, and then it will just slide right out relatively easily. But if you don't put any kind of oil in there, these things can be a real difficult thing to get loose. This screwdriver, a thin uh, Phillips head screwdriver like this is the easiest way to go to try to get this off. Now, you want to take the screwdriver and slide it in between the joint, okay, the rubber and the, uh, then the stud. Now, when you pull on it and you just kind of work it around and it will, it will pop right in. And then all you have to do, get the screwdriver out, put it through. Now she comes 
and the tailpipe comes right out. Just like that. The next step is to get these joints off. Exact same process. Shoot a little bit of uh, fluid inside there, some sort of oily type fluid, silicone, whatever, and work it out using a screwdriver. Exact same process. Okay, this is one of the places where you could use some help. I've got a, a stand that I use, exhaust stand that I've had for years. But this is one of the places where you can use some help. Uh, you need to have someone help support the back side of the exhaust as you take apart the front side. If you see right up here, there's two little 15 millimeter uh, nuts on these studs here that go to the rear half of the exhaust. Before you take those loose and undo the front hangers up here, you really need to have someone help you hold this back part or put a stand or something under it. Once you get that one on the floor, throw it on out here with the rest of this stuff. Goes in the trash can. Okay, now the next step is to get the downpipe out of here. And that requires us to go up top and take the clamp off of the turbocharger. So we got to drop it down on the floor to get a hold of this one. Now the down tube hooks into the turbocharger up here on the top and back way back on the engine. If you have a pyrometer on your truck, which I highly recommend you do, you need to take this loose at this time along with this band clamp. Now, this band clamp can be a bit of a, uh, a challenge, but you, with a little bit of prying and a little bit of coercion, you can get this thing off of here. The band clamp looks like this, and the first thing you need to do is you need to take this, uh, use a 7 16 or 11 millimeter deep, deep well socket to get this loose. And then what happens is it becomes hard to expand this one. And you've got to get one side and then the other side and then the bottom. They're usually stuck on there real good. Uh, and, and it just takes uh, a little bit of patience and sometimes a pry bar or a, or a screwdriver. You just have to kind of go through the stuff that you have to pry this loose to get these pipes loose. Sometimes getting these clamps off can be a bit of a challenge. But lay something across like a, I got an old seat pad. Lay it across the top of the motor and you ought to be able to get in there. Try not to lean across this tank though. These tanks will break if you, uh, you know, put 250 pounds on the damn thing. So. Uh, just have to work through it and you know I use all different kind of things I mean I got a crowbar and a couple different pry bars sometimes a claw hammer will get the angle you need uh, to work this loose now unless you want to remove the cross member which is a pain you gotta cut this down tube I don't like to cut them with it attached up to the turbo because the place you need to cut it you have to drop it down to get to but once it's off the turbo it drops down and you want to cut it right here in this bend as close as you can and uh, then it'll come out in two pieces. 